does it take to be a pro wrestler? Not about being huge, not about being loud. First and foremost, desire, dedication, discipline, and being tough. I want to be the best. I mean, that's my goal. I don't want to be the rock. I want to be the, the next me. I wouldn't settle for anything less than superstardom. I just would aim big. I, I can't work a nine to five job whatsoever. I, I have to be out there. I have to be wrestling. I have to be entertaining somebody. Wrestling's in my blood. He is the greatest. He is the best wrestler out there. I'm going to continue to work at this until something breaks for me because I feel like something will happen. When I got into this business, I was told there's three things that it takes to become a professional wrestler. Number one, you got to look the part. Number two, you got to act the part. And number three, you got to be able to wrestle the part. Don't think wrestling is any different than getting ready for a football game on Sunday. Nothing different. Or getting ready for an NBA game. This is the only real sport right here. Wrestling. <laughs> Welcome to the world of independent wrestling. This is wrestling's minor league, where aspiring young hopefuls dream of making it to the big leagues of pro wrestling. This film follows the stories of four hopefuls at various stages of their game as they journey towards their goal of making it big in pro wrestling. Making it in the increasingly competitive field of professional wrestling requires a combination of athleticism, charisma, and hard work. Rick Bassman runs Ultimate Pro Wrestling in Orange County, California. It is considered to be one of the top wrestling schools in the country. We have guys and girls calling us every single day, every size and shape and from every walk of life. We let them get in there and show us and show themselves that they can take it. Wrestling's very, very hard. When someone walks through the door, you can usually tell pretty quickly if they have that spark, if they have the possibility of making it, that's something special. What do you see yourself doing with this business? Um, I see myself as, as a superstar. I mean, I, I wouldn't do it if I was aiming for anything less than that. How much time are you willing to put into it? Whatever it takes. This is a test question. Whatever it takes, good answer. Now let me ask you this, is there a different style that you train the women in or do they just train exactly the same as the man, no, no different? They have to train the same now. I mean, that, the business of the women is evolving so much where just a year ago, it was really what they call eye candy, pretty much, with a couple of bumps thrown in there. Now they want the girls to go out there and work. It's changed that fast. So what we do is we train the women just like the guys. You've got to hit hard. You've got to make everything look hard. Not like the powder puff uh, wrestling. If you're not tough already and you hang with this for a while, you'll be tough by the time you're done. I know I could be really great at it. And it'd be fun because I have the background in sports and I'm very athletic and because I have the background in uh, entertainment. You know, wrestling is entertainment. It's sports entertainment. That's what they call it. So her neck's gonna be killing her right now. Good one, honey. All right. Nice job, huh? I think she's a shoe in the way she looks, man. Money, 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 money. That's my baby. Come on! <laughs> There's a crash in for her. That's all. It'd be great to see my wife shining on, on TV as a superstar and having fun at what she does. And if she's happy, then daddy's happy. If she's happy, the kids are happy. I know that I fulfilled certain dreams in my life, and I know what it feels like to fulfill a dream. And I want her to be able to fulfill a dream and feel really great about herself doing it. I think they're excited because they see the incredible potential. I think they see a gold mine in her, and uh, she can handle the training, which is going to be very tough. We're going to go places. I pay him to say those things, my <laughs> personal manager. <laughs> I could have played, you know, like some other smaller leagues of football like I had done, but the passion and the love really wasn't there. It was either NFL or nothing. And when that didn't materialize, I said, I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna go give everything, you know, give it at least a year to move to Los Angeles and see what happens. Let's go. Come on. Well, when he first came in, he was, you know, about 320, 330 pounds, fat, but huge, yeah. a lot of muscle. 
A lot of fat, football player, lineman look. Uh, I just sculpted him down, taught him how to eat right, how to train right, how to supplement his uh, diet directly. It's just all chest, man. It's like, oh. it's like he's about to explode. Like I got dynamite with a fuse. The extreme kind of violent side of me was there. I mean, I got kicked out of two football games in the CFL for fighting, which is not good. But I'm bringing something, I'm bringing that extreme violent nature in the wrestling, and I'm gonna kick it up a few notches. I've wanted to be a professional wrestler since I was three years old, and uh, which sounds kind of funny. I told my dad, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be a professional wrestler, and at three years old, my dad was like, yeah, whatever, okay. Then, um, the you know, older I got, the more it started burning inside me, you know, watching wrestling, seeing the fans, seeing the reaction. Mikey, come on, kick it down! Mikey Henderson, in my opinion, is probably the biggest miss in the business right now. I mean, the buyers are missing something by not picking him up right now. When you look what he can do in the ring with the look, the face, the body, and the age, especially, he's 20 years old. He's pro wrestling's Backstreet Boys in the making. He just needs a shot, that's all. I have a lot more experience in, uh, than some of the guys who got signed with WWF and they got signed because they're a certain height, a certain weight, and everything else. I mean, that's frustrating because I think, man, I've put this much time into it. I'm better than that guy. I, you know, I can do twice as much as he can, but because I'm shorter, I don't get that attention. I think if I was six foot something, I would already be signed. I remember sitting in bed at night crying. Wishing, you know, praying to God, God, I mean, make me a little taller, please, um, you know. And, um, it'll work out. I just, I'll find a way around it. I need an ETA on Chris Daniels. Uh, the character that I use right now is called the Fallen Angel. I come out dressed in a cassock. I wear an ankh around my neck and I wear a priest collar, like a clerical collar when I wrestle. And so people visually see that and they immediately turn against it. They see somebody dressed as a priest coming to the ring and immediately it's, it's a, a negative reaction from the crowd. In the last two years, I've wrestled in about 35 different states. I've wrestled in Mexico, I've wrestled in Japan. Chris, by and large, is considered the number one unsigned wrestler in the country right now, possibly in the world. The problem with Chris, and I use that word carefully, problem is you look and you don't see the stereotypical wrestler right away. It's easy to think about the downside because every day that passes and you don't get that phone call, you start to doubt. I'm afraid like a, a company might look at me and, and a person my age and maybe not consider me a good investment. They may look at that and say, well, if we hire this person, he may not have any more than three or four good years. I'm not 21 years old. I'm doing security at two different, uh, one is a restaurant and bar, and the other is like a strip club. And I work those two places almost every night right now. So, I mean, I'm pretty busy. But, I mean, it, you know, it costs money to eat. The big thing is feeding myself. I mean, I, I spend, that's probably where I spend the majority of my money on food. You know, I mean, I have rent and utilities, but food is just as much. Uh, that's all you're buying today? Yeah, man, I'm on a diet, you know? Okay. Trying to cut back. I had to slow myself down. Moved out here uh, from New Orleans, which was a big, big move. Uh, I, you know, I left my family and my girlfriend behind. So, I mean, I've been lonely, needless to say. Her name is Brandy Gilmore. Um, I, uh, shoot, I can, I don't want to start crying. But um, I want to get engaged just to secure our relationship. Not that we get married for maybe a year or two, because there's so much going on with both of us. But that way, it's just almost like, say here, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm yours. Well, I'll talk to you later. Love you, bye. Eight, you want to win, you got to push here, girl, let's go. 10, full, go, come on, up, come on. I learn really well, I watch. Whoever I'm learning from, whether it's dance or whatever it may be, 
and try to do exactly what I see them doing. Two. You know, I know technically, like when I first started training with weights, my Darren tells me all the time my technique is just right on. Oh my gosh. I heard you wanted to win. Was that, was that not, wasn't that the word that was out? Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, let's go. Let's win. All right, what am I doing again? Four second count. Drizon McBee, who's uh, brand new with us, is a question mark, a big question mark, but only because she's so new. And again, we've been doing this long enough now that I think we have a pretty solid take walking through the door on who's got a chance and who doesn't. You can tell what's real. And she appears to be very, very real. Two. We had a real straight up honest talk about one thing that I thought was missing, and that was uh, getting the body in better shape. Not that she looks bad by any stretch, but uh, I think she'll do it. She took it to heart. Um, hopefully she's in the gym right now, who knows. There's potential here. What? Lots of potential. We may turn you into something after all. I know it's not easy. I know there are hundreds of women out there that, you know, if you put them in this chair, they'd say the same thing. You know, I'd work hard, I'd do this, I'd do that, and they would. But I know myself, and I'm a perfectionist, and I just wouldn't quit until I got there. And I don't take second best. I won't settle for second best for myself. I think I'm my, my own worst critic and my own toughest coach. So I'd work really hard. Yikes. To make a dollar, I'm working in a wood yard, slave labor, and working for my dad, a place I don't want to be at. <laughs> it's like everything tomorrow looks good, but everything today is like down here, so. Well, Mike's worked in the firewood business since he was about eight years old, and uh, he knows about everything there is to know about it. He hates it. <laughs> my parents divorced when I was eight years old, so it was basically always my dad and I. We've had our ups and downs, you know, like everybody does. You know, I remember times he'd get pissed off because I wouldn't want to go to school. I used to hate going to school, which now I wish I would have. I used to tell him, well, you can't wrestle unless you go to school. And um, it always seemed to keep him in line enough. See, kids, this is why you get your education, so you don't do this. You going to slam me? Yeah, you want to be slammed? No. <laughs> My dream right now is just to be able to get a contract with WWF and, or WCW. Once I'm in there, I think I can stay there. Then from there, it's going to be to try to be on top. I mean, I'm just going to go one step at a time with my dream. First thing first, I need to get a contract. There's probably 100 wrestling schools in the United States right now. There's probably, from those schools, 30 to 35 guys and girls that have a development contract with WWF. 14 of those have come from us in the past two years. So that tells me that we must be doing something right. <laughs> Our responsibility is to find new talent and to go out and develop new talent and help develop that talent, go out and find them in the independent circuit or find someone who wants to be a wrestler that has tremendous potential and nurture that and train them to uh, make them a WWF superstar. Yeah, Bruce Pritchard has been by to see our shows and been to our school probably on a dozen separate occasions now. And the type of relationship has developed where we know what they're looking for now. Never before and the business hasn't been as competitive as it is right now. In the WWF, we're, we're setting you know, new standards every single day. And once you get there, trust me, it's a thousand times more competitive than you could ever imagine. One guy is dropped off, boom, there's a hundred others over here ready to jump into that spot. So when time comes, you know, and, and it is there, you get that call and it's ready, you gotta be ready. What's the big kid's name? John Tidenreich. John. You got a sec? You're living here now, right? Right. I'll talk to everybody when we get back, because I think you know, we may do something. And... Man, I appreciate it, brother. I mean, 100% dedicated. Cool. That's what I want to do, man. You're not married, right? No. You got a girlfriend in New Orleans? Yeah, I want to get married. Okay. I'm solid as far as relationship. All right. Cool beans. All right, man, we'll be in touch. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Hi, buddy. Each month, UPW hosts an event at the Galaxy Theater in Santa Ana, California, where UPW hopefuls showcase their talent. I think tonight's show is going to be awesome. There's a lot that's gone into writing this thing and creating it. Another note for tonight. You guys are on. You're performing the second you get through this curtain right here. 
Start turning that crowd on the second you hit the curtains. WWF is a, is a bigger production show. You're watching a big screen, you can't even really see the wrestlers that good. So you might as well stay home and watch it. With something like this, you're right up, you're in the action. You feel like you're right there with it. There it's more scripted and more glam and all that. Here it's just hardcore raw, you know, it's it's in your face. I like the violence. Oh yeah. The violence. With the chops. The chops. The high flying, the high flying. Yeah. And the guys. The guys. Yeah. Tonight I'm gonna be wrestling Hoovy. Uh Hoovin Tude Guerrero, who's from WCW. I should you. Learn your feet. Catch me in your feet. It's it it really is like a dance. Okay. There's a give and a flow between wrestlers. The two performers, the two wrestlers, are working together to get a certain response from the crowd. You want me to roll out or in? I think out. Okay. And then when you get that response, then you know that you follow with this bit of business. You kind of lead and you follow the crowd at the same time. Watch wrestling on TV. If you watch these guys and you're like, oh, they know what they're doing. They're not getting hurt. Wrestling's fake. Well, wrestling's not so fake when you're taking a body slam off the top rope or just taking a regular body slam or jumping over the top rope. 20 years old, yes. But I've had concussions. I've landed, you know, I've broken my rib. I've been, you know, messed up my knee. You know, you're out there. You take a beating. When people say fake, it kind of insults me because there's a lot of pain and hard work that goes into it for something to be called fake. There's no fake about being picked up by a guy 260 pounds and being thrown on your back. There's no fake about getting hit in the head or the back with a steel chair. It's not fake. I mean, when people say that, I'm like, man, come to a class with me. You know, I invite them. I'm like, I'll pay for your gas, you know? I, in four months, I've heard everything. From an ankle to a knee to a wrist to my neck to my back. Take your bump, sell it, get up the long way, and the guy will be waiting for you. Boom! Yeah, I get headaches after doing this. I don't know, it's things like the jarring. I hit the mat really hard. I can feel all my internal organs shake and my brain rattle in my head. And I sort of have to shake it off. Yeah, shake, start shaking. I guess it's fake in the sense that in a basketball game in the NBA or pro football, there's two teams competing and we don't know who's going to win. In wrestling, everyone might know <clears throat> that Triple H or The Rock's going to win. But I mean, what's going on out there is real. All right, let's go get the boy. I don't know if they'll throw a fit about bringing the cameras in. Let's see here, you gotta sign them out. What time is it? Time. Tay Tay. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Tyler. What are you doing? Oh, it's my boy Tyler. I like that. My relationship with my son is. His mom and I, we kind of, we separate, you know, sometimes we're together, sometimes we're not, and, uh, which makes things hard, because I don't get to see him as much as I want. Let's go home and watch wrestling. Yes. We'll go home and fight. Oh. Do I go home and fight? I'm going to try to offer my son the best future that I can. I think that's through wrestling. Yeah, I'm going to open the gate with your head. Open. <laughs> How was school today? Did you have fun? If I can give my son a good home and food on the table, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. You know, he's not going to lose his daddy. You know, I'm going to always be there for my son. And, you know, I'm young enough, and, you know, 15 years from now, hey, maybe, maybe him and I will be a tag team somewhere. So <laughs> it would be kind of cool. Every wrestler needs a persona. Today, Mikey is about to find out he's getting a new one. Actually, Mikey Henderson, what we're looking to do is making him into a bad guy. Basically, in wrestling, I mean, you know, there's a certain amount of time where guys can be good guys. And there's times, you know, where you just feel like, hey, you know, something's going to happen with this guy. And, you know, what if we made this guy a bad guy right now? But the thing that I would recommend for you is, you know, just to go out and beat the crap out of everybody. Don't smile. You know, just be intense about everything you do. I mean, what if I smile, but with a smart ass type of. Yeah, real cocky and what have you. So. Just like, you know, snare and just like. Make him hate you. Make him hate you. Be a smart ass if you have to. I think what I'm going to base my character around now is just hating the fans. I don't need you. I'm my own person, you know. You know, I'm going to sit down with Rick over the next couple of days and um, try to figure out the character, try to see what we're going to do with it. I, right now, I'm kind of stumped, you know. <laughs> As a well-known wrestler in the Southern California area, Chris is asked to comment on a backyard wrestling federation for a local TV station. 
UPN News 13 starts right now. Thursday night in our top story, neighborhood mayhem, backyard bashes. For the first time, backyard brutality like you've never seen. Prepare yourself, it's bloody, raw, and cruel. Now with this Unit 13 exclusive. Is it just a matter of time before there's a serious injury in backyard wrestling, something like paralysis? Yes. Definitely, definitely. It's just the law of averages. The fact that they're not trained, the fact that they're doing it in an unsafe environment, uh, trying to outdo one another so they keep pushing the envelope, and then at some point, you know, all of those things equal some sort of injury. These kids put on a damn good show. They're not doing drugs, they're not drinking. Uh, they're not affiliated with gangs, shooting people. They can get hurt anywhere just as good as him. All the professional wrestlers, they come back and they see the tapes or whatever, and say, oh, they don't know what they're doing. They bad mouth us and everything. But we are the kids that buy their pay-per-views, buy their t-shirts, buy the $35 cheap seats just to see our superstars. And then they have the nerve to bad mouth us just because we want to do what they do. One, two, three, four. They wonder why the media comes and says, oh, this is stuff is barbaric. Well, when they open up the box of thumbtacks and throw them on the mat, did you think something might happen with thumbtacks then? When he pulled out the barbed wire from underneath the ring, did you think someone might get hit with barbed wire? When he pulled out the board, did you think that that person was going to get hit with a board wrapped in barbed wire? He got hit with a guitar. He could have had his eye put out. Pointless. Just, just blood for blood's sake. Cutting yourself just to cut. At the end of the day, they're all gonna go up to that one kid and say, hey, you know, you did a good job. That was good blood. And, you know, you gotta ask why you do something like that. Why would you do something like that? I know no other mothers that are professional wrestlers at this time, especially mothers that look like her. You know, it's great to be the only this or the first that, whether it's the first mom professional wrestler or whatever the case may be, because then you inspire other people. It's an incredible balancing act that's gonna have to happen there. She's a phenomenal mother, and I'm, I'm really proud of her, but we all have different sides to ourselves, and I would like to see her be successful in, in multi-facets of her life, not just being a great mom. No crying, no crying. Come on now, mommy's gonna be fine. She's not gonna get hurt. <laughs> Mommy's gonna be okay. Mommy. I think that I would do everything I could to reassure them that it's, um, you know, just to show mommy's okay. It may look like I'm being hurt, but mommy's pretending. I'm just acting. There are probably certain situations I would keep them out of. I would never want them to be afraid that I was really being hurt. I don't know if she just missed me today because I've been busy today or if she doesn't want to see me go in there and get uh, slammed around. <laughs> okay, how do I get her upper body to land the same time her feet do? It's just it's like flipping a pancake. It's very, very hard for kids to, to differentiate between reality and fantasy. The last thing I want them to do is think that it's okay to settle their disputes in school through fighting because if they see mommy do it, then it's okay for me to do it. That's the one thing that's real important that I gotta make sure that they know that that is not something that's okay and it's just pretend. Well, as I mentioned on the phone, we've got some, some big news for you. It's a great news. Right. You've been at it for just a few months now. Right. And it looks like you have all the goods. What we got in the mail here, or FedEx, I should say, for you is your WWF development deal. Oh man, that's great. Tremendous, it's, it's, tremendous. It's awesome. Um, it can allow you to get off of those door jobs at four in the morning and... Uh, Dedicate all my time to training so I can get, I want to be the best. Here's what these development deals are about. They're putting you under contract now to continue to develop your skills. It's a time for you to really even focus more than you've been doing already and kick some serious ass. Not many people get these. Right. It's, it's amazing to get one. It really is. I'm honest. Great. Congratulations. Thanks, bro. And, uh, Appreciate it. It's uh, make some good stuff happen. Yeah. Developing a wrestler is a lot more than just putting them in the ring. The training in the ring is first and foremost, but there's so many other facets to that. Well, I mean, we do have the class that we go to weekly. It's called promo class. And that's when you get up there and talk for 30, 45 seconds or a minute 
like they do on the uh, Monday Night Raw, Thursday SmackDown. Are you sure you wanted that? The show is filled in in between the wrestling by these little segments. I don't fake it, I break it. Every single time John is going to point his finger, every single time that he starts talking about being the biggest and baddest, there needs to be purpose behind that. Look at me, marvel at my size, strength, and ability. I stand a colossal three. And in our world, we take no casualties and always win. So let's say that monologue again, and I want you to start pointing the finger at me. I'm, it's you and me right now. You hate my guts, you want to tear me apart, train wreck ready to happen, let's rock and roll. Okay, come on, get serious, let's go. You hate me, let's go. Look at me, marvel at me. I stand a towering six feet seven inches tall, and I weigh a colossal 300 pounds. When you step into the ring with me, it's gonna be a war, not gonna be no game. I'm gonna take your ass to hell and back, to hell and back. And when you get back, you know what it's gonna be? Triple H is gonna be game on for your ass. That's serious business right there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Big Swaggin' Crew. We are speaking to WWF signee and UPW wrestler John Heidenreich on the Comedy World Radio Wrestling Network. But you've come out, how long have you been out here in LA? Uh, six months. In six months' time, you've dropped 30 pounds, you've ripped the shreds, mm -hmm. you, you've, uh, you've, you've gotten some acting work, you got to be yeah. on 18 uh, Wheels of Justice. With Tess. With Tess for the WWF. Yeah, that was badass, dude. If they want to keep the crowd going, we'll just grow up the grow up. I mean, everything's going great. I'm totally happy. This is the best move I think I've ever made in my life. I don't want to take too many more bumps. B Mark. And then the WWF, uh, UPW Ultimate Pro Wrestling, and Rick Bassman and the crew, we get you in front of the WWF, and they say, you know what? That man's big. He may be a little ugly, but he's big. And uh, the WWF signed you to the developmental deal in six months. Unheard of. Everything's going great. I'm, I'm totally happy. And First look. Nice. After eight years on the independent circuit, Chris finally gets his shot. I got a phone call today from one of the uh, talent guys at World Championship Wrestling, and uh, they offered me an opportunity to wrestle on Monday Night Nitro. And so what's going to happen is they're going to fly me out Sunday to wrestle Monday night to basically audition for hopefully a job. Uh, let's get her ready to rumble. Well, I mean, I'm nervous. I mean, it's, it's an opportunity. It's like one of those things where you get that big break. Um, you know, a good match can make you and a bad match can break you, so, you know, I just want to get in there with a good attitude and show them that I'm, I'm ready to be on the national stage, so to speak. Keep your fingers crossed. In comparison, wrestling is every bit as hard. It's actually harder, in my opinion, because the variety of movements you have to learn are so much more diverse. Like, football is a lot of natural movements. You're running. You're backing up and you're going sideways. In wrestling, you might have to, you might have 50 moves or 100 moves that are really unnatural. Though John is on track with his training, his relationship with his girlfriend has suffered a setback. About two or three weeks ago, I had a conversation one day with my girlfriend, and she she told me she wasn't sure if she was still in love with me. You now you just. You wonder what happened. You're trying to figure out what happened. What did I do? What did she do? Where did this, where did this thing just crop up? I am planning to go home for a couple days just to try to see if I can uh, gain some information or some insight. I mean, all I do, I mean, I tell her, hey, this is where I stand. I love you. I want to be with you. I'm dedicated to you, heart and soul. And uh, you know that. And I mean, that's all I can do. My life changed drastically five years ago um, when I was called Born Again. That's kind of key for me. I mean, I want to wrestle and it's, it's fun and it's exciting, but it can also be a platform for me to share my faith with other people. And not just by the things that I say. I mean, I don't want to get in the ring and preach to people. Um, a lot of it is I just want my conduct and my behavior to speak for itself. As an entry-level position, Drazan is brought on as a bell ringer at the Galaxy Shows. 
Darren and I have talked about that sleaze factor. There, there are certain things, you know, I have standards. I have my Christian beliefs. There are certain things I won't compromise. But I am an entertainer. I am a performer. I'm used to dancing in, you know, very sexy costumes. Um, and I like that. I enjoy that. And I think that I would just kind of be myself and hold true to my beliefs and hope that that part of my personality is what came across. The truth of the matter is wrestling has always gotten over or been successful based on mirroring what's happening in society. This day and age, it's all shades of gray. We don't know really who the villains are in society and who the good guys are. So that's why wrestling works. People get to take all these things they see in society on a daily basis and look at it all in one person or in two people, better yet, facing each other and battling it out. Big John has just returned from New Orleans where he went to visit his girlfriend, but she wouldn't meet with him. I'm strong, I don't need nobody except God and my family. I don't need a woman to bring me down. I really don't want to get in this conversation right in the middle of class because you're f***ing up my concentration. I'll be really honest with you, okay? Please, respect what I'm doing. Sorry, okay? I really don't want to... It's over. And I don't even want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> don't mind him. He's still upset about his girlfriend. It's understandable. <sighs> you know what happens when you, depress, when you suppress your emotions? It tends to... Even now, it explode. <laughs> I know where I'm going, I know what I gotta do. And I'm focused and concentrated. I don't need somebody that doesn't know what they want. Not to sound arrogant, but it's her loss. So you haven't seen us? Back from his national debut on WCW Nitro, Chris shows Rick the tape. Okay, here we go. Here we go. As you heard Mike Sanders a few minutes ago, Webb been scouring the, the world looking for two of the great cruiserweights, and he's found them right here, Christopher Daniels, a North Carolina... Good entrance. I was real happy. I, I thought it was going to be one of those... Music Already in the ring. Right. But Daniels has wrestled around the world, very well known in Japan, Puerto Rico, Mexico, and a golden opportunity here to wrestle on Nitro. On the side of the head of Modest. Oh, look at wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a good move. I've never seen that before. Angel Christopher Daniels. Oh, and then Daniels with a knife edge job that stunned him. Oh, jeez. Holy cow. Look at my arm after this. Oh, your left arm just hanging there. Oh, my God. It looks like it's dead. Oh, he's working the arm. A high risk maneuver. You take that chance of that happening on this television program, Scott. High risk indeed. About 30 seconds into the match, I went for a move where I jumped on the top rope and I was going to do a backflip, but my feet slipped out from under me, and instead I landed right on the top of my head. The first thought in my head was that I screwed everything up. I finished the match. Uh, my arm is still real numb. How is this thing going to end? Who's gonna... And I go back into the locker room thinking that, well, there's no chance that this is ever going to turn into anything. About five minutes later, they offered me a job right there my big shot and I go out there and I almost kill myself and on the other hand I got the job that I was trying to get in the first place so it's the worst injury I've ever had I've been lucky up to this point I'm still lucky I mean it could have been a lot worse I could be paralyzed whenever you wrestle you know that if you're doing something high risk you're doing something acrobatic like that the possibility for a mistake is there the law of averages I guess you keep doing this long enough at some point something is going to slip up you don't want to make that same mistake again. Two weeks before his big debut at the Galaxy, Big John gets into a car wreck. I didn't have time to even stop, man. I ran into the back of the lady. She just came to a complete stop. I, I didn't even put on my brakes. I hit her just boom, solid. Caved her whole back of her car in. I'm still freaked out. Then, during practice, John breaks his hand on the side of the ring. My six months here has been my worst week, you know? You think you're in control of your life, but you walk out that door and bam, you know, a car wreck. You get in the ring, bam, you break your hand. 
sometimes I question, you know, man, is it worth me going out there and breaking my neck to say I made it, you know, I'm wrestling or whatever, I made it famous. I mean, I, I've thought about, you know, questioning me being out here and stuff and kind of put it, you know, saying, no, maybe the same for me, you know, several times. Physically, it's, you're destroying your body. There's no two ways around it. I mean, look at me, you know? I mean, anybody that's a professional wrestler, I mean, is paying a dear price for whether they love it, they want to do it for the money or whatever the reason. I mean, they're paying a price. Tonight's match at the Galaxy Theater is crucial for our wrestlers. Not only is a WWF scout present, but it marks the beginning and the end of their independent careers. Despite his recent setbacks, John is willing to risk his hand to prove to the WWF that he's worth their investment. You know, I mean, I've been working my ass off, getting beat up and everything, and I want a chance to get in front of people and perform. Big John and Nate will debut against the Ballard Brothers, an experienced tag team from Canada. I'm going to uh, protect the hand as much as possible. I'm going to change one thing in the match, reduce the chance of me damaging this anymore. And I think everything's going to go well. I'm excited. <laughs> I could, couldn't sleep well last night. From the beginning of one independent career to the end of another, tonight, Chris will wrestle his last match for UPW before heading off to the big time. I should be all right. This feels a lot better than it did a week ago, that's for sure. Well, I'm happy to see him go to WCW. A bit jealous, but I'm happy to see him go. And you know, hey, I got 10 years before I'm his age, so I'm... Yeah, at least. At least. Ready to chart new territory, Mikey will test his new persona as a heel or a bad guy. His opponent will be his own boss, Rick Bassman. It's everybody's dream to beat up your boss, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to make sure it's real good and stiff. Hey, how many of you guys want me to beat up Rick Bassman tonight? How many of you guys think I'm a Yeah! Thank you. Though not yet ready to fully wrestle, Grazan will begin her career by interfering in another match. She's actually going to get involved in a match tonight with uh, Victoria and Molly Holly, who are two WWF stars, so it's an auspicious beginning for sure. Along with wrestling his last match, Chris is also the choreographer of tonight's action. Backstage, he goes over the moves of Big John and Nate's match with the Ballard Brothers. Video, video and music. Let's go. Go. Theodore Roosevelt had a quote: "Thrill belongs to the man whose face is marred by like sweat and blood. Even if he doesn't know victory, he's not." with those timid souls that know neither victory nor defeat. If you go and try something and give everything into it, wherever you end up in the end, you can still say that you tried. It was fun, man. I enjoyed it. I, mean, I really had a good time. I think everybody in the crowd was happy, so that's cool. What I'm gonna do next is, uh, you know, I need to rest my hand. Bones don't heal unless you rest them. The feedback from everybody seems great, but I mean, I'm a perfectionist. Y'all see it? I'm happy, but I want to get better. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the lovely Drazan. Tonight, Drazan, what we're doing is we're planting the seed with Drazan. You know, to you have to pretty much turn her into a bad girl. Right now, you know, she's our timekeeper, what have you. The whole emphasis tonight is, is to get her started as a wrestler. Of course, I was hoping to be the face, be the good guy, get the big cheers when you go out, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I think I'm going to get the big boos when I go out. Okay, as you can see, here's Victoria. She comes in with her promo. I don't know who you're calling at home. 
she asked Razan, honey, you know, how can you lower yourself, you know, to a timekeeper? I think the bell ringer knows exactly what I'm talking about. I won't really turn nasty and be mean. It's just sometimes. So it'll be okay. Just have to make sure I'm talking to my girls and letting them know that mommy's not really behaving this way. This is for the show. You know, there may be some other beautiful moms out there who thought, well, I can never do that. I have kids. Well, sure you can. You know, if you've got a great husband like I have who's very supportive, sure you can. You know, why can't you? Life doesn't stop after you become a mom. I mean, I love my kids, and I would do anything for them, but I'm, I'm Drazan as well as mommy. Yeah, it was fun. It felt good to get out there to do some right. stuff. In his new role as the heel, Mikey will betray Rick in favor of a rival promoter from Northern California, Roland Alexander. Whatever corner you set him up in, you get in the opposite corner, mm -hmm. okay? And Mike, 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 you've done your part for UPW. Now it's my turn to get my one minute with Roland Alexander. You, my man, have done your job here tonight. And Mikey has done his job or what? Mikey backs up, does his little deal like, go at it, go at it. I'll be right here, I'll, I got your back. Got the clothes on? Yeah. Right. Mikey, you're watching all this like you're the ref. Like, go get him, go get him, Owen. And then when you feel the time is right, from behind. Keep standing. Okay, let him pull you out to right. here. Come and then, on. bam, right. you're down. Go to your stomach. For Chris's match, a dramatic device has been created to justify his leaving UPW. The storyline is that the loser of the match will be banned from the Federation. As the new bad guy, it will be Mikey's job to ensure that Chris loses. Okay, that's the idea then. The whole deal is, um, Marty, the spot's gonna be in the corner. I'm gonna have Joe, and I'll, when I go to throw him, I'm gonna say, Marty, get in the corner. I'm gonna throw, he's gonna go underneath. He's gonna go for a clothesline. I'm gonna duck it. You, he hits you. I'm going to hit him with a kick. He's going to go into the corner in Angel's Wings. Angel's Wings! Mikey, that's your cue. As soon as I hit Angel's Wings, come running out. And take your time with, look at me, look at Marty, bright idea, one, two, three, and run right back to the deal. I'm going to get up, sell a little bit, then I turn around and Marty's still down. Marty, why are you still down? You okay? You okay? Raise my hand. What are you talking about? Raise your hand. I didn't count the pin. There's the argument. Joe, I'll give you a thing. Boom. One, two, three. And then when Joe leaves and I realize, Tim, they'll both leave, but I'm still in the ring. And I'm going to be sounding like, I just got sent out of this place. I don't know, but I, I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen this way, but it'd be the chance to go, <laughs> you know. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think tears are going to come, but I'll be like, you know, that type of thing. Go take a bow. You're still a champ! You're still a champ, Chris! This wasn't the way I wanted to go out of UPW. for 10, 15 more years as long as I'm healthy and I want to, and I can perform at the level that I want to perform at. I mean, even when I started, there wasn't a thing where I said, well, if I don't make it in five years, I'm going to quit and, you know, go stack boxes in a warehouse or anything like that. I felt as long as I was doing it and having fun, there's no reason why I can't continue to do it. At 20 years old, I've already traveled the United States. I've seen more things than most people get to see. And a lot of people don't get that chance. You know, no matter what I do tomorrow, I've already got to fulfill parts of my dream. Now it's just taking it to the next level, getting the contract. You know, getting somewhere, getting noticed, then going to the top. That's what I'm going to do. Ten years from now, I'm going to look back and go, huh, well, there's nothing there. There's no big deal. You know, I'm on top now. Seeing a wrestler, a person become a wrestler, is really a 
personification of a comic book hero come to life. And I think wrestling probably is the single best platform to create real life superheroes and real life wrestling villains. The guys who have truly transcended the ring and become part of pop culture, they add one more dimension to the whole mix. They're real people. I've never had that before. And probably can't think of another medium we ever will see that again.